In this video, I'll be doing a quick overview for every mechanic on all four bosses in the Mythic Plus version of Halls of Infusion. If you guys enjoy tips and tricks like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel and join us over on my Twitch channel, link in the description to do Mythic Plus with me live on stream. Now, if you guys are looking for an advanced guide on every boss where I share tips and tricks from every perspective, tank, healer, and DPS, there'll be a link in the description below for every boss as well on the top right as every boss is playing on screen. There'll be a card you can click to bring you to those exact videos. But for a quick overview, let's dive into this one. First boss in Halls of Infusion is Watcher Iridius. A few things to watch out for is going to be a tank mechanic called Titanic Fist. Now, this, you're going to see me get hit here in a second, but actually, this actually is avoidable if you just either sidestep or walk under the boss to avoid the mechanic. Next one is going to be Static Surge. This is just AoE damage that goes out in a pulse. You see him casting, and there's going to be four ticks throughout this. We took one of them already. The second tick goes out there. Third tick goes out right there. And fourth tick goes out right there. Raid wide damage, great moment for cooldowns, defensives, whatever it might be. Another Titanic Fist, which is the frontal. And the next big one is going to be Power Overload. Power Overload, you'll see our DPS. Three people are chosen. Those three people want to run far away from the boss because when this cast ends, it will actually put a huge circle on the ground that you want to get away from the raid and then be able to come back in. If someone drops the circle near you, Tank can just pull far away from it. Give yourself some space to rock with. Static Surge is another ability that goes out. AoE damage that can actually be outranged if melee runs four yards away. They won't get hit and they come back in and continue the boss. Those are really the major mechanics for phase one. There is actually an intermission phase, which I'll show right now. During the intermission phase, the boss will run towards the center. He will shield himself and begin to cast Siphon Power. The entire time that he is casting Siphon Power, he is actually making himself stronger, meaning that in the next phase, everything he does will be empowered, which we'll go over in a second. You'll also see these floating orbs. What you need to do is kite these on top of the boss, kill them as soon as possible to end his Siphon Power, meaning the longer that these stay alive, the longer the boss is casting, the more he is going to empower himself. So the sooner you kill these, the sooner that cast will end. You wanna make sure that when they die, they die on top of the boss. This is the only way to knock him out of that cast. You do not want to be standing in this circle when that happens, so be sure to get out. You'll knock him out of that phase, bring us into the next phase where all of his abilities will be empowered. Now, in phase two, all the mechanics are exactly the same. The only thing really to note is that when we get the power overload, where we in phase one got those circles that get dropped underneath your feet, the only notice, the only thing to notice here is that those circles are just going to be bigger. Remember, everything he does in this next phase is going to hit harder because he was siphoning power, making himself stronger. So you'll notice how much bigger these circles are, meaning that you're gonna take a lot of damage when trying to run out from them. So remember, kill those orbs, get him out of siphon power as soon as possible so that he is not super, super OP going into phase two. Second boss is Gulping Goliath, the infamous frog boss. This boss is a few things to look out for. First ability we see here is overpowering Croak on the meters. This is going to do AOE pulsing damage. And at the end of the cast, he will throw these frogs around the map. These frogs are mega important because they will fixate on people, chase you down. And when they land melee attacks on you, they will give you a debuff. They will give you a poison. If you allow this to get to 10 stacks, you will instantly die. So be sure to cleanse. Be sure if you're a shaman, you've got the totem, put that down, or individual cleanses are super important. You want to kite these frogs, and you want to stay as far away from them so that you're not getting the debuff on you. Now, I want to encourage you to click the link in the description below to check out the advanced guide where I talk through how to really deal with every mechanic on this boss in an advanced way because it's a really cool tip and trick that I share to make this boss super easy. But basically, you want to kite them. Next ability is going to be gulp. Now, if there is not one person standing within this green circle, when this gulp ends, the boss will become enraged. The way this works basically is the boss needs to eat one of your players, preferably your tank, because he is the tankiest. He can pop a defensive and take it no problem, even on a 17 tyrannical at around 430 item level. If he does not eat someone, he will be he will grow bigger, he will turn red, he is enraged, and his physical damage will be increased by 50%. Percent. Now, if any of the frogs are also in the green circle, in that video, I explained how to do that with these, he will eat those frogs as well. 
Next mechanic that is coming up is called Toxic Effluvia. This again is just more ticking raid wide damage. Defensives are great here. Healer, just be mindful and also be watching everyone's stacks. So you'll notice raid wide damage just ticking. I believe it takes three times and then it is over. Last mechanic you'll see is called Belly Slam, where the boss will pick a targeted player. He will put a huge circle on the ground and you see our healer AJ Valdez gets on his horse and just runs out. Very easy to avoid. And for that boss, that boss, that is all the mechanics. As long as one of your players, especially the tank, gets into the gulp and gets eaten and you do not allow yourself to get 10 stacks of the poison, you'll be good in this boss. Third boss of Halls of Infusion is Cage in the Unyielding. First thing to note is that when we all get into range, we will all get a debuff. This is unavoidable, cannot be cleansed, nothing you can do. It is called Polar Winds. It is doing damage every 1.5 seconds to the whole team, so lots of damage going out. First ability that we see here that goes on the tank is called Frost Shock. This will do damage and reduce your movement speed and it can be dispelled. Next ability we'll see is something called Frost Cyclone about to go off. This, the boss will turn at a targeted player. So anyone in your party can be selected for this. And she will put a white stroke on the ground representing a tornado that is about to launch from where the boss and where you are standing. You want to be sure to move out of it and be careful not to point that tornado at to any of these ice blocks if it's a whole ice block it will break the ice block and make it broken like this one if it's already a broken ice block it will explode doing grade wide damage to your whole team so watch your position cyclone goes out there you see our team moving but unfortunately we see that the monk does go down i know the frost shock is going to go off but this next one is very very important Hailstorm is a raid-wide AoE damage that goes out. It cannot be outranged. You cannot run far enough away to be safe from it. The only way to stay alive is to run behind one of the whole ice blocks. Now, notice I said whole, not broken. If you go behind a broken one, it will explode and you will probably die, especially in High Tyrannical. We get behind the ice block and our team is perfectly fine. Last mechanic to watch out for is called Glacial Surge. Going off right now, she will cast. When that happens, you will put a circle of ice on the ground. You just want to get out of melee. You want to wait for a second. That ice moves, turns into a donut shape. Now you get back into melee and you'll be good. As long as you are not standing in the ice when it's on the ground, you'll be perfectly safe. That pretty much is this entire fight. Biggest thing to watch out for is do not point those tornadoes at the ice and your team will be a-okay. Fourth and final boss is Primal Tsunami. You notice going into this fight, there are a few mechanics to take note of. Tempest Fury is unavoidable raid-wide damage. You'll see us get trucked right now on high tyrannical keys. That is going to hit very, very hard. Defensives, healing cooldowns will be great in those moments. Next ability is called Infuse Globules. Now, this will put a white circle on the ground around every single player on the team, and then a floating orb is going to appear. You need to move out of it, but also notice that it does actually move. So these will be moving around the map. So be very, very careful. Next ability is called Squall Buffet. This is technically a tank only mechanic, but it does involve your melee, which I'll explain in a second. Squall Buffet's about to go off. That is going to be a knockback from the boss. So technically only the tank gets knocked back, but it's very important for everyone to note because two things on this boss, if there is nobody within melee range, the boss will do an AOE damage to the whole raid. But if there is someone in melee range besides the tank, pretty much the boss will hit whoever is closest to him. So melee needs to be very careful when the boss gets knocked back because if your tank does not get back immediately, he is going to smack whoever is closest. So I get back as soon as possible. And that is most of the mechanics that are in phase one before we get to the intermission. Intermission will happen when the boss casts an ability called Submerge. All the boss will do here is go underground, become unattackable, put everyone in these bubbles and send you to these three long bridges along the room. This is pretty simple. All you have to do is just get back safely. Few things to note. If you touch these globules right here, they will not only do damage, but then they will become a really big blue circle on the ground, which will make it harder for you to keep crossing the bridge. Another thing to note is these tornadoes from when we did the gauntlet earlier. Again, in this video, I didn't cover any of the trash routes, but if you guys are interested in learning the routes and what every single trash mob in this entire dungeon does, their interrupts, their what to stun, what to move out of frontals, I will literally, I go over everything in this dungeon, link in the description below to get that exact video right there. You walk through and get back to safety. 
Next intermission, very important. You'll see these four mobs around the boss, which obviously the boss is unattackable at this point, and you see them casting an ability called Infuse. Infuse actually is them making the boss 1% stronger every five seconds per mob. So there's four of them casting. So if you do not interrupt these, the boss is getting 4% stronger every five seconds. But just note that when you interrupt the ad, it then starts casting an ability that is not interruptible that will do AOE wide damage called inundate. So make sure to cycle crowd control, stuns, all that good stuff. Otherwise you and your team will start taking massive AOE damage. In my advanced guide about this boss, I show exactly what our team did to both prevent ourselves from taking AOE damage and not let the boss be getting strong with that cast. Again, link in the description below if you wanna see the boss guide on this specific boss. After we get the final add down, you will see that in a second, the boss is simply gonna come out of that water and rinse and repeat all the mechanics I went over. You will continue to keep on going across those bridges until the boss is dead. So the faster you DPS this boss down, the less times you'll get sent back. If you guys enjoy these type of tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to this channel, but also join me live on my Twitch channel, link in the description below, not only to learn Mythic Plus tips and tricks, but to actually do these keys with me. Come join our community, Unity Gaming. We'd love to have you. I want to say a massive thank you to everyone that watches these videos and supports. I appreciate y'all. We'll catch you in the next one.